Hi everyone and welcome back into my channel. I wanted to share with you today um, my next design team project for Country Craft Creations. I made a waterfall folio featuring the Graphic 45 Fashion Forward Paper Collection. Um, this is a gorgeous collection. If you want to see um, each individual page, there is a video on my channel that shows I do a walkthrough of each of the, the pattern papers. So this is a big one. So this is seven inches by 10 inches, I believe. Um, yeah, and check out the colors. I just absolutely love the colors of the paper. This paper is one of the, I believe it's authentic. I think it's called the Spectrum paper. And there's the back. I don't usually put any embellishment on the back. Uh, because it kind of takes a beating laying on the table and people set it down and move it around and stuff. So there's what I did with the cover. I used one of the cut aparts for the month of January. It says, oh, happy day. I think this was January. Um, I actually purchased the, and I don't have them at, right here at my fingertips. I purchased the ephemera pack, I believe it's called. Um, that goes along with this collection. You can see there's a little butterfly. You can't really see the sparkle. Oh, there's a little bit. Um, these are just a bunch of flowers that I had in my stash. Here is some of the seam binding that came in my design team kit. And this black right here is just a piece of cardstock and I used a um, Martha Stewart punch. I just love that punch. I forget what it's called. And this flower trim, it's pearlized, was part of my design team package. Let me actually fix my light. Hope that's better. So again, there's the spine. It's a two inch spine. So as I mentioned, this is a waterfall. <laughs> it is a lot a waterfall. Um, so what I did, so this, this collection is not just the fashion forward, but there's, it's also a calendar type collection. Um, so what I decided to do is I did a waterfall for the months of January through June on the left side. Then I had a couple of um, filler type pocket pages I put on in the spine and then July through December is over here. So let's just start with January. So you can see this is one of the cut aparts. So this is a four by six I think it is and you flip it up and I just use one of the stickers that says out with the old in with the new. Um, as you heard, there's a magnet closure. So that is the reverse side for the month of January. And I decided to add a pocket to the waterfall tag, um, waterfall flap. Um, and I just took a couple of the cut aparts that they were too beautiful not to use. Um, and I decided not to mat them because they're gorgeous the way they are. I mean, you can just put a photo right on the back of that and two small photos on the back of that. I just thought it was so pretty. And then you could just tuck them away right there. So there's, I'll just flip quickly through this. This is February. Oops. And there, some of the cut aparts. Oops. Here's March. That sticker there, she's gorgeous. Look at that, isn't that pretty? There's some of the cut aparts. Or the journaling cards, I'm sorry. Here's April. I thought that, that is so pretty. And here's some of the April. Oh, I didn't even cut this off. As you can see, this actually came on the uh, the cut apart sheet. Actually, I might just leave it like that. And it says spring has come when you can put your foot on three daisies. I had never heard that, but I'm ready to put my feet on three daisies. I don't know about you. <laughs> so here's May. It says let your love blossom. Look how pretty. I'm not sure what kind of flower that is, but that's gorgeous. Blossom, grow, and dream. There's a couple of the cut aparts. 
And here's June. And there is the June color parts. Isn't she gorgeous? Just love like the vintage you feel of it. And then what I did was took some of the extra cut parts that I didn't use in the pockets and I just cut them out to use as tags. Sorry, and there's two pockets here. So I just put three in the one pocket. Let fortune smile. I would love to let fortune smile all over me. <laughs> um, blossom and grow. And then this one is a little bit scary. <laughs> So hide those. So that is January through June. And then here is just, you can see I have a two inch spine here. And I thought it just kind of looked naked without anything in here, but you really don't have to add these. Um, so I just made a pocket flap and there's just a, a large tag. You could put photos and journaling on either side. Here's another one of the cut aparts. And want some of the stickers. That light is just crazy. Ugh. I apologize for the light. I'm sorry. It's either shining in my eyes or blinding you. So there is the tag. And then this one. I just used some of the cut aparts. I really love this one. You are strong. In the cut apart. I mean, in the tag. And then this was actually from the Christmas, from December. And I just used a little piece of the cut apart and just made a little pocket topper or stopper. So here's July through December, the pretty orange. I hope that color's showing up for you the way it's as vibrant as it is. And I like the, that um, this wasn't the, a normal calendar. It just you know says Sunday through Saturday um, because for July, maybe you just wanna write down birth dates that are in the July, the, sorry, birth dates of someone you know that's in July or September of October. Um, or whatever, or whatever pictures you want to use for July, you can you can write, you know, circle the day of the week and put the date in. Um, I just think that'd be a lot. That's a lot of fun. Okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> okay, there we go. So there's July. It says sunshine and smiles, and then this I love. I don't know if those are water lilies or what those are, but I love them. Okay, there's the couple of the tags. Fun in the sun. And there's a couple of the tags are very, very fashion forward. Okay, and then there's August. It's just a little tag. Sunshine and summer days, it says. And here's September, beautiful blues and greens. Love her. <laughs> then here are the tags. It says admired, hello fall, creative, live with passion, spread your wings and fly. I mean, just how gorgeous is that? Love it. And here's October. Probably one of my favorite fall months. And it says, you are my sunshine. And I think those are gourds, I'm not 100% sure, but gorgeous greens. Enjoy the little things. It says, life is a beautiful thing. Oh, life is a beautiful thing. And then, plant smiles, grow laughter, harvest love. And here is November. It says Daring Adventure. Look how pretty. The oranges and yellow and green. 
Oh, I only have one here. It says, ah, autumn. Missing a tag. Must have taken it out by mistake. I will fill that back in. And then here is December. Pretty green. There's a peace, love, cheer. There's some holly. And then warm winter wishes. And I love this photo. I mean, I love this picture on this tag. All is calm, all is bright, and she's looking out the window. It's snowing. And it says glad tidings of joy. I thought that was so pretty. And then also, just like on the on the left-hand side, there are two pockets. You have that one. Love in his hat. It reminds me of the hat that I had to wear when I was in marching band in high school. <laughs> And then there's uh, Mrs. Claus, Believe in the Magic. And here's a couple more of these. I could look at these tags all day. Aren't they gorgeous? Wild Adventure. And then a Butterfly Day. So those just tuck in there. And that's the book. And it's actually, it's pretty involved, but it's quite simple. So um, let's get started making it. So, what you're going to need, I need to stand this up, put this over here, sorry for that. What you're going to need to start off is some chipboard. <clears throat> so, I actually am going to make this one six and a half by ten. I thought the seven was just a little too wide and a little too floppy. So, um, get yourself two pieces. Oh, gosh, you can't even see that. Two pieces of chipboard that are six and a half inches by 10 inches. And I decided to go with black chipboard because it's what I had, <laughs> number one. And number two, I didn't want to have to wrap this one. Um, yeah, I was out of my favorite um, artisan cardstock, artisan linen cardstock in black, and I had to settle for a lesser paper. If you know what, I, if you've used this cardstock, you know what I mean. Um, so I am just not going to wrap this one. So um, let me show you what I, what I plan to do. And um, I haven't done this yet, so I'm hoping it works. I guess we'll learn together. So again, two pieces of chipboard, six and a half by ten. Then you're going to want a piece for your spine, which is two inches by ten. Then I got, I cut two pieces of black cardstock that are four inches by 10 inches, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with those. Again, I'm not gonna wrap mine. At this point, if you wanna go ahead and wrap your chipboard, you know, the traditional method of wrapping, um, you know, feel free, but I'm, I'm gonna try this, see how this works. So I'm gonna take one of those four by 10 inch pieces and um, put, score tape. Again, for the purposes of the video, I'm going to use score tape. You could use wet glue for this, but um, you just have to patiently wait for it to dry, and I'm not patient at all. So I just put some score tape or whatever double-sided sticky tape you like around the perimeter. Then I took my spine, which is two inches by ten inches, and added score tape to the back of that. And I'm going to remove the backing. the score tape I'm also going to remove the top and the bottom okay then I'm going to center my spine on here as best I can try to keep it as straight as you can the goal here is to have at least an inch on either side of the spine. And mine's a little bit crooked, but nobody needs to know that. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to take, where is it? Um, somebody stole it. Who stole my quarter inch score tape? Okay, so I'm just gonna take some score tape and put some right along the edge of that chipboard. I don't know where my quarter inch score tape went. All right, and I'm going to do the same on this side. Oh, 
Of course I ran out. This never happens unless the camera's rolling. Bear with me one second. Last package of quarter inch score tape. What is that all about? <clears throat> okay, we're back. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to take, you can start with your left side or your right side. Um, your chipboard cover, and I added a piece of score tape along the inside edge. I'm going to remove the score tape. And then take it off of here. So this is double kill. I mean, I understand that I didn't necessarily need to add that much score tape but it makes me feel better so typically I use a quarter inch score tape here as a spacer um, so I'm going to try my best to give myself at least a quarter of an inch all the way up turn it over and as you can see the color is a little bit different from the chipboard to that cardstock but um, I'm going to cover that with a pattern paper anyway, so I'm not too concerned about that. So, and then let's just go ahead and repeat that one more time. Take off all the score tape. And take your other cover. And again, hope you can see that. Try to line it up, make it as straight as you can. Give yourself enough of a gap. Okay, so there your book comes together. Okay, so at this point, you can decide to go ahead and Use some cardstock and wrap it. As you've seen, I have a hundred videos. Um, all the other designers and Tammy, um, there are a hundred different videos that can show you how to wrap um, your your book with cardstock. I'm sorry, um, but again, because this is black, um, I didn't feel the need. And I would have used black paper anyway. I didn't feel the need this time to cover it with cardstock. So. But what I am going to do is take that other, that second piece of 4x10 cardstock and cover it with, um, what is this, score tape. Now you can use the score tape sheets. Again, like I said, you could use art glitter glue or whatever your favorite adhesive is. But because this is going to cover the spine, and the spine takes a lot of abuse, um, I like to use a really, really strong, what I know to be a really strong adhesive. So I'm going to go with score tape. All right, and then what I just want to do, I'm going to turn this over, is just line this up so that there's at least one inch. Oh, I did forget one thing. I'm sorry. Back up. Anywhere that there is a joint, meaning cardstock, space, I'm sorry, chipboard space, chipboard. I like to put at least a quarter inch of score tape right along there so that the joint is really clean so that the paper doesn't bubble right there. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. And again, this on here is probably a little bit of overkill, but I better, better to be safe than sorry, I say. Okay, let's give that a good burnish. And then let's just peel that backer off. Okay. All right, so 
I'm going to start on the bottom and then just try to get, like I said, at least an inch on either side just to cover that up. Okay. And you can kind of start to see So that's done the same way as if you would have done um, with wrapping your chipboard. So what I'm going to do next is, after I, after I feel that I've burnished that well and that it's sticking, let me give it one more burnish. Actually, let me just, there we go. Sorry, I had to widen my screen. Now I'm just going to go ahead and lift up gently. So you see where that right there is where um, the space in between the two spines. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Teflon bone folder. Don't want to use anything that's going to pierce it, the paper, even though I have done that on many occasions. And just kind of get it ready. Coax it along so that the paper... Um, lays in that fold. Okay, see so how it gives you a nice clean look? And let's just start that over on the other side. I can already feel, I don't know if you can see it, but I can tell that I, um, it's not that I did anything incorrectly. I just feel like I would have left just a little smidge more space. Um, it'll be fine. But I just have to take my time and train that paper. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna close the book. Now this is gonna get covered, so I'm not too concerned if this cracks. Again, it's not my favorite paper, so it may it may crack, but I might be so pleasantly surprised, and it won't. All right. So see. There, the book is done. And again, like I said, it's going to get covered with pattern paper, so I didn't feel the need to wrap it. Don't know how many times I'm going to say that, but <laughs> all right. So, yeah, so we can go ahead and set that aside after you're comfortable that you, um, so you can see the book stays shut. It wants to open a little bit, but that's, that's just what happens. I have a little bit of an overhang on the paper right here. I just need to trim that off. Oops, sorry, you can't see that. All right, so you can go ahead and set this aside, and we're going to start on the first waterfall. All right, so um, it'll be the waterfall on the left-hand side. So what you're going to want is one piece of your cardstock, whatever cardstock you choose. Um, six inches by nine and seven eighths, and I call this the waterfall base. Um, where's my pencil? I learned this a couple of years ago, and now I may, I always use a base um, for every waterfall that I create. Just makes it so much easier. So six by nine and seven eighths. All right, and then, for each one of the waterfall flaps and for the left hand side you'll need six and for the right hand side you'll need six so you'll want a total of 12. Sounds like a lot right? And it is. <laughs> so um, I cut mine down six inches by seven and a quarter. Okay and then what you're going to want to do is put it in your scoreboard. Score at a half of an inch um, this is the seven and a quarter inch side will be in your scoreboard. So I'm gonna pull mine out so that you can see. Oops. I am just having a heck of a time today. Hope you'll bear with me. Um, so you have your six inches by seven and a quarter with a seven and a quarter inch side in your scoreboard. You're gonna score at a half of an inch and then three quarters of an inch. Okay, and you'll want to do that 12 times. Um, and 
If you want, like I did, if you want to round your corners, I would definitely suggest you do it now before you put the waterfall together because I didn't. And it, I mean, it, it was a hassle. It wasn't all that difficult, but it, um, I would round them now before everything's all attached. Okay. All right, so you want to do that 12 times. And then what you're going to need, which I just found it, okay, is, so for those flaps that had each one of the, the months of the year, you know, the January, the February, so on, you're going to want 12 pieces of your cardstock to their six and three quarters by four and a quarter. And you're putting your scoreboard on the six and three quarter inch side and score that at a half of an inch. And you're going to do that 12 times, like I said. Um, now, I went ahead, when I do a waterfall, I use score tape. Um, typically, I use score tape, um, but I have been known to use wet glue too. It's just, you know, whatever you prefer. All right, and then we have. Each waterfall has a pocket, waterfall flap, sorry, has a pocket. If you recall this pocket right here. So you're going to want to make 12 of those. And they, their dimensions are three and a half by seven. And you want to put it in your scoreboard at this, with the seven inch side in the top right. Score at a half an inch, six and a half inches, then rotate it to the short side and score at a half an inch. Or the easy way to say that is score at a half an inch on all three sides. Okay. So again, you'll want to do that 12 times. And then at the base of the waterfall, we have those two pockets. You're going to want to cut two sets of these. Um, you're going to want to cut two that are two and a half by seven inches. Again, put in your scoreboard, score at a half an inch, score at one half, and then at six and a half, rotate it and score at a half of an inch. So you want two of those, and then you also want, actually you want, sorry, you'll want two of the, four, sorry, I'm sorry, you want four total at two and a half by seven, you're gonna score two of them on all three sides. And then the other two, you're gonna put it in your scoreboard with the seven in on the long side, seven inches, score at a half of an inch, and at six and a half inches. And I'll show you why we only score two sides on that one. Good gravy. <laughs> that was a lot. So let's get started. So if you want to go ahead and get everything cut up, I will put together a cutting guide that will be in the description below. Um, I do suggest that um, you watch the video all the way through because I am notorious for changing things. And um, yeah, just to be safe, watch it, watch it all the way through and then go ahead and cut all the measurements should be fine. Um, you can cut everything, watch the video all the way through, and then you can you know, play the video, rewind me, shut me up. <laughs> Good luck with that one. All right, so let's start with our waterfall base. And one thing I really like to do when I'm putting together my waterfall is I use my scoreboard because you see here, this doesn't move, right? And I turn mine upside down because I like to work from the top. I like to work backwards. So, all right, we're going to do the first one. So you have your one piece that's six by seven and a quarter, and you scored it on the long side at a half inch and three quarters of an inch. And I applied score tape to that half inch piece, the half inch flap. I'm going to remove that. Okay, so I am going to fold along that half inch score line. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here. And then what I like to do, I hope you can see this, what I like to do is line up this corner with this corner of the waterfall base. Actually, let me check something. 
Dang it, I didn't. Okay, anyway. Line up this corner with this corner. Make sure everything's straight. Push this up against the side of your scoreboard. And you can see it just lines up perfectly. So there's that three quarter inch score line. So what I did, because I'm putting a pocket on this page, so you can see that little bit of extra space up here. Because if you've, if you've ever made a mini album and you start to fill up, or not a mini album, a waterfall, and you start to fill up with photos and everything, it ends up like this, right? So your closure ends up being wonky or maybe your magnets, your magnet closure doesn't meet the magnet on here and it just looks crazy. So um, I'm just giving a little gusset room to grow, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and do all these first, and then we will go back and add the pockets on. All right. So I think I have a second one. Uh oh. Let's see. I made most of them. Do I have one too many? I might have one too many. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, so take your next one. Apply your adhesive. Okay, and just with every, any other waterfall, so right here. I, I recognize and I apologize that black is not the easiest color to see. I should have used like maybe craft or um, you're going to want to take this half inch fold. So right on the fold and butt that right up against the flap of the prior waterfall flap, if that made sense. So now you have two. You see how that kind of it lays relatively flat? Except mine is off just a smidge. I will go back and trim that. Alright, so the next one. Actually, let's do this while we're here. If you go back to the original or your very first waterfall flap, we're going to add that top flap. So this one is your four and a quarter by six and three quarters, I believe. Yes. And you scored it at a half inch. We're going to just remove the backer. And then eyeball it as you best you can. Center it. Um, again, this is the top of your waterfall and I'm working upside down. Center it right on that fold. You don't want to go over the fold, but get it as close as you can. Okay, so if we turn it around the right way, so I'm a little bit off, but I'm okay with that. I'll just make sure they all line up. So there's your first flap. So that would be your January, and that's your flap. Okay, and then let's go to the second one. And then line that up. And what I'm doing is holding this one and peeking around it at this one. So I'm trying to line it up, line up the two flaps. Okay. So I'm, again, I'm a little bit off, but I'm not too concerned about that. All right. So this is January. February. Okay. And then I have already done my next four. Okay, so you're going to want to go ahead and do the exact same thing. The way I originally did it is I went in when I started to create it, I did all of these flaps first, the bigger flap. Then I came back and did all of the smaller, the top flaps, the smaller. Then I went back and did all the pockets. 
But one thing, if a piece of advice that I can give you, and you can absolutely do it that way, and it's not that difficult, but it was much easier for me. So I created six of these little column flaps, right? So there's my top flap, there's my bigger flap, and then on the back, I added the pocket. It was so much easier to do it this way than to, tr than to put the pocket on while it was already attached to the book. So um, I'll show you how I did. I do that. So I went ahead and I put all the flaps and the pockets together, the pocket together. Then I just take this and line it up with the preceding flap. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Whoa. Almost had a disaster. Lined it up with the preceding flap. And it's ready to go. So you have flap one and flap one, flap two, and flap three with the pocket. So I will add these other flaps and then we will go ahead and add the pockets to flap number one and two. And because I don't want to torture you any further, I went ahead and did the right side, ooh, the right side waterfall. I already put that together off camera. Okay, that one's a little not straight, and that's gonna bug me. What happened? What did I do? What did I do? Crooked. That's okay. I will trim it down. All right. Next. Okay. Line it up. That's number five. Something just does not feel right. What is going on? See, this book just does not want to be made. It just didn't want to be made the other day. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. Let me see. What happened? Oh, I see what I did. And I put it up too high. Okay, let me see if I can do this. If not, I will shut off the camera. Everybody hold your breath. Oh, dang it. It's gonna tear, it's gonna tear. See, everybody makes a mistake. Oh, that's awful. And you know, I'm gonna let you watch me do this because this stuff happens. Whew. Okay, it's not too bad. <laughs> it's not great, but it's not, it could have been worse. All right, so let's try that one more time, see if we can get this one off. Shoot, I just ripped it. Oh. Dang, nab it. Bear with me. Okay. That's a little bit embarrassing. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more score tape on here. This could have been much worse. So let me make sure I lined everything up. Hope you're still with me. Hope I didn't scare you away. All right, let's try that again. So as you can see from this disaster, I actually placed the next one up on that tab from the previous one instead of placing it after. 
There we go. Okay. See, yeah, it's showing off. <laughs> much better. It lays much flatter. Okay. Boy. I'll have to go in and fix my furnishing. Okay. And this one. Let's repair that. See, I, was sh I just knew it was going to tear because this cardstock is much thinner than the artisan cardstock. And thank goodness Tammy's such a super quick shipper. I ordered a new supply and it just got here. A new supply, sorry, of the artisan cardstock. Okay, there we go. Maybe I'll edit that out. <laughs> okay, here we go. So let's get back to where we were. Line this one up. Okay. All right, there we go. Now we have the last one. Tab. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay. This is actually much easier than I'm making it look. All right. So there you can see are your waterfall pages. So we have January. February, March, April, May, and June. Now again, I'm just saying, um, you know, the months of the year because I'm actually going to use a different paper. I'm not going to make another, you know, duplicate of this one. But just so that you get the idea. And I'm not concerned about this right here because I am going to cover that up with um, a piece of pattern paper. So, all right. So what we're going to do next is put the pocket on those first two flaps. So again, you need two pieces that are three and a half by seven. You're going to score a half inch on three sides. Okay, and I'm going to form my pocket. Okay, the way I like to do this is to close the bottom flap first. Okay. And close the two sides. And then you don't run the risk of any adhesive getting underneath your flaps and you know any of your um, tags sticking. Okay, actually, I will turn this right side. So this is the January flat waterfall flap. And what I'm going to do is come in, you can see that here's the score line. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up pretty close to that, but you know, without touching or going over the score line, line up the edges and stick your pocket down. Give a good burnish. There you go. That's pocket number one. And we'll repeat that. Pocket number two. Did you guys ever have one of these crafting kind of days where you just, you know, everything went beautifully when I was sitting here by myself and, you know, making my project. And then, of course, as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as the camera starts rolling, you know, my Wi-Fi died, I had to start over, get my Wi-Fi um, shut off, and I had to start over again, and then I made a mistake, and it's going to be exciting to see what happens next. <laughs> 
So anyway, so I went ahead and I formed my second pocket. And there is my score line right there. Sorry. Okay, so my black nails and the black paper, you can't really see. I apologize for that. Um, but I'm getting as close as I can without going over the score line. You can leave as much space as you want. Lining up along the edge of the flap. And there we go. There is my score line is a bit off on this one, so I'll have to go and fix that. But all that's left is to put the two pockets here. Now, I believe what I did, instead of making them sideways pockets, on I created the July through December already, or the right-hand side um, waterfall. I made horizontal pockets. Oops horizontal pockets on this one. And I will show you how to do that real quick. Again, same same size. Um, two and a half by seven, scored at a half inch on three sides. Let's put some score tape on that. I know you've all watched me do this in other designers numerous times. But somebody might be new. I hope there's somebody new wanting to learn how to make a waterfall. And I apologize. This has been a disaster. Um, I promise. Go back and watch one of my other videos. They actually are very, very good. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, score along those fold lines. Let's give them a good burnish. Where the, those two score lines intersect, I'm just going to go ahead and cut those out. Cut out that little square, or miter the corners, however you want to refer to it. And then also we're going to just take a little smidge off of the top of that flap, and that will stop any of your tags from getting stuck. Okay, and then, so here's your other two and a half by seven piece that you scored a half inch on the two long sides. Yeah, on the long side. That just felt weird to say. I'm just going to add some score tape to there. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for a minute. So you bring your, and I'm just propping that up to make it easier for me. So we're going to go ahead and take that first pocket that has three sides. Take this bottom left, line it up down here, or if you want to, if you're left-handed, line up the right. Whatever's more comfortable for you. I tell you, what a day! Right, and then line up the bottom. Give it a good burnish. There's pocket number one. Now pocket number two, go ahead and fold on those score lines. Now this is up to you. You can line your pockets up just like that, which that's fine, you know, and then your tags will, um, I assume you'll cover it with pattern paper, um, and that's fine. You won't even notice that there's two separate. But what I like to do is just take and create, um, just cut that on an angle there. I'm going to cut this one on an angle. Try to keep it the same, but it doesn't really much matter. Okay, and the reason I do that is I just like to fold, put that top pocket, lay it down inside that bottom pocket 
see that? Let me do that again. So I went and I cut this angle, obviously I cut it a little more than I cut this one. But the goal there is to keep these both the same. I'm going to let me trim that. Okay, so that your pocket, your top pocket fits right inside your bottom pocket. Okay, I hope that made sense. Now let's take off the paper backing. And slide that in, line it up along your edges. Get in there. Oh, and then just stick it down. Just give it a good burnish. And then put a piece, there's a piece of scrap paper. So you have a long pocket there. And then there's another pocket there in front. So, long pocket in front. And longer. If you wanted, you could put a third pocket there and have an even longer tag. Um, you know, that's totally up to you. So that is your waterfall for the left-hand side of your book. Okay, so to attach it to the book, what I like to do after I straighten all this out is take some score tape. I find it easier to use score tape. Put it, you know, turn your waterfall on its back, on its face. <laughs> and then, because again, this is gonna take, just like the spine, it's gonna take a lot of abuse. So I like to use a nice, strong adhesive. If you have, you know, full sheets of score tape, they work beautifully. Okay, bring in our book. So again, I'm just going to set it in my score pal. Helps keep everything straight. Makes it easier to line up. All right. Okay, I'm gonna have to stand up for this one. So I like to keep it, you know, face down for a minute. So what I like to do is line it up close to the left hand side so that there's this littlest bit here. Um, just in case. Right. Actually, I'm going to move mine a little bit so I can see. All right. And put that face down as straight as I can get it. Okay, then I take my bone folder. Just give this a really good burnish in between each one of those um, flaps. Sorry. Okay, and you can see it's almost to the top of the book. All right, oh, I do have a little bit of overhang here, but I will use a craft knife and cut that off. But yeah, so there's the first, the first side. Now, <clears throat> you're gonna want a closure, of course. So you can decide whether you want to use seam binding. Actually, I'll just use this as if these were seam binding, okay? You can, Use some score tape and put one piece of seam binding here 
in one piece here and you can do a tie closure um, or you can do a cardstock closure with a magnet. So I cut a piece that's inch and a half wide, <clears throat> excuse me, by seven inches long and I put it in my scoreboard with the seven inches on the top right and I scored it at a half an inch and then I scored it at every eighth of an inch up to one inch. Okay, so what that means is I went a half inch, what's after a half? Five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, and then at one inch. So what I did there again is make a little gusset so that as this grows bigger, um, a lot of strain is not put on, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of strain is not put on the um, waterfall closure so that it will keep it closed okay and it'll actually expand as the waterfall expands hope that makes sense to you okay so on the back of that half inch tab oh, let me grab some magnets so i like to use these basic gray magnets um i don't know how i got along without them all these years without them but so you want one positive and one negative. Actually, I'm going to need two. I need one for the other side. These are a stinker to get out. So, bring your book back in. So I take the, put a piece of score tape on the half inch, and then try to find the center. Try to find the center of your waterfall and just kind of stick that down. So you can see there, and then what I'm going to do, so here I have the two magnets together. I have the plus on one side, the minus on the other, and I don't know that it matters which one you use first, but I just got in the habit of sticking down the minus sign first. Don't, again, don't know why. Um, so then I'll find... So I like to cover the inside. You don't necessarily have to cover this with pattern paper. I mean, I always cover the outside, but I like to cover the inside also. So I just find a spot that's not too close to any of the edges, right? Because I want, I don't want too close up here because I don't want the, um, the magnet to show beyond the pattern paper. And then also same over here, okay? And then take the backer. So come back to your book, and I don't like to squish it down, right? So I just want to like let it naturally fall, and then just stick that down. And then I like to add a piece of score tape, because I have had in the past where the magnet lets loose. Okay, so I'm going to put a piece of tape there. I'm also going to tape, I will show you in one second. And put a piece of score tape on, on there just to hold a little extra protection to hold that magnet down. And uh, so we now have, there's that extra gusset, jeez oh, Louise, that extra little gusset room. Actually, I might move that. Sorry, I think I might have made that a little too tight. See, I don't know. This is not, is today Monday? Feels like it's a Monday. Ugh. I don't want Monday. I didn't even have a weekend yet. Oh, please don't rip my paper. Please don't rip my paper. Okay, so it's two mistakes. Let's 
do this. Um, what I'm going to do is make sure they have a little bit of slack. There we go. That makes me feel better. Okay. No harm, no foul. Nobody even saw it happen. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll do this just so it doesn't stick to everything. Don't do what I don't do as I do, kids. Do it the right way. <laughs> okay, there. So now I'll show you. I feel better. There's more slack in there in that closure. See that there? Okay. Let's move on from the disaster of this left hand side. <laughs> Right inside. Good gravy. All right. So, as I mentioned, I already made, so you don't have to, again, suffer through that again. I already made this waterfall, so we're just going to pull this up. And stick it down. Try this, see what we can mess up this time. All right, so I'm going to try. Again, I want to line this up as close as possible to the right hand side without going over the book, obviously. And I want to try to keep, excuse my head if I get my head in the camera. Just got my hair color today, so you won't see my intelligence highlights. <laughs> All right, so. Lay that down. Oh no, that was pretty uneventful. Okay. Let's give that a good burner so it sticks. Burnish. Burnish. Good burnish. on me because I almost just fell on the floor. <laughs> holy cow. Holy cow is all I can say. Holy cow. Holy cow. All right. Let's again. One and a half inches by seven inches. This is our waterfall closure. Put it in your scoreboard with the seven inch side and the top right. Score it a half inch, five eighths, three quarters. Um, seven eighths and one inch. Actually, I didn't score it one inch on this one. Cheater, cheater. Okay. There we go. All right, so I am going to remove the backer. All right, try to line that up. Try to line up my right hand side closure, you know, along the bottom as close as the as close as possible to the one on the left, or the disaster on the left is forever going to be known in my mind. All right, so there we go. So we have that good little slack there. Oh, pray for me, people. Here comes another magnet. Do the same to add our magnet. Remove the backing. And leave some slack just like the prior one. I feel pretty good about that one. Let's take some score tape. Cover that up. Actually secure that down. I meant to say I didn't cover it up. Okay. All right. 
so that oh cut that by mistake so that is your waterfall book all done up so you can if you want put a couple um, pocket pages here in the middle um, but I was actually thinking I'm not going to do that on this one I will give you the dimensions um, I just I don't know I just don't like the way they looked here I mean I love them I love the pocket pages um, I'm just not crazy about how they look I don't know if it's because there's too much flappiness going on um, yeah, so um, I will actually, in the description, I will give you the cutting guide to tell you how to make these. These are pretty simple. It's just a standard pocket page um, with a flap, with a half inch flap, and you just use score tape or wet glue and you glue it into, onto the spine. Um, but I'm thinking, I don't know, I might just maybe make another calendar one or make this like notes or something this top flap make these like a note flap and maybe put a pen let's see I don't have a pen but let's pretend this was a pen and then put a ribbon closure or something you know like a little strip of a ribbon loop here and then cover pattern paper and then you can actually keep a pen in there you know I just thought it might be pretty cool um so yeah so that's the project thank you for suffering through that with me <laughs> Um, as you can see, it's a pretty tall, it's pretty long. Um, there's a view from the side. Oh, you can also, too, you can consider if you want to do a closure on this one. I actually, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do, turn this into a folio that I use for notes or something. Um, if you had, have you seen those uh, Tim Holtz buckles? Um, that you can actually attach on ribbon and you can put a buckle here and you know have hold it closed um, I have some but they're across the room over there um, yeah I'm thinking that might be actually pretty cool but I may just make another one of these <laughs> I wish you could feel this this is this has got to be I don't know how many pounds it could be but I mean it's pretty heavy there's a lot of paper in it um, so yeah I don't know if I pointed out to you uh, I used um, look how pretty those start those paper flowers are. I just had these in my stash. I have this little butterfly and some green swirls, and then I use some stickle not stickles. What are these called? Nouveau Dream Drops, and just the little drops here and there, so the little shimmer. I just thought it was just so pretty. So anyway. That's my project. That is my disaster for the month of February. <laughs> I love the finished project. And um, after I decorate the one we made together today, I will, as you can see, it's a little bit smaller. I just, I think I like it just that, you know, that half inch smaller. Um, so after I decorate this, I will pop on real quick and share the finished one with you. Um, so if you have any questions and you still trust me, <laughs> by all means, please call, or yeah, you could call me if you have my number, but um, please reach out on social media, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations on, on this YouTube video. Um, you can email me at myscrapdesk at gmail.com. Um, somebody always knows how to get a hold of me, or if you, you know, you can ask Tammy how to get a hold of me. She always knows. So, um, thank you everybody for suffering through this with me, um, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.